So today's second reading is from Matthew 9. It's verses 35 to 38. And it's, the title of the section is, The Harvest is Great, the Laborers Few. Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good children's moment goes right along with the message. Of course, it's from the same scripture, so it should, I guess, huh? Yeah. It, uh, the title of the message this morning is Help Wanted. You know, we see Help Wanted ads on TV, uh, sometimes in the newspaper and on bulletin boards, I guess probably sometimes on computer in some, some form, on Facebook and things like this. But what do they all have in common? Usually, people looking for someone to, to do a job, uh, right? Looking for someone to hire or to, to do a job that they're looking for. So I want to look today at a, at a help wanted ad in the Bible. And that's our scripture for this morning that you just heard from, from Carol. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for all that you've given us today. We thank you for the songs, the messages in them, for the prayers, for the scripture readings, all the parts of the service that we've already experienced, that your spirit has already been um, among us and, and spoke to us through. Now, Lord, as we look into your word, we pray that you open our hearts, our minds, our ears, give us understanding, help us to get from your word what you have for us today. Let it be your mouthpiece to share the things you have to share in a way that you have to share them. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, so uh, today is the 20th Sunday of uh, Pentecost, but it's also Laity Sunday. Uh, we celebrate the, the, the work that the laity do in the, in the church and in ministry. And like Jerry said a while ago, you know, the, the, the call to, uh, to make disciples, to, take, to go and tell is for all of us. And without the laity, our ministry would not go forth. Without all of you. Uh, the thrift store would not exist. The church would not exist. And the ministries that we do as a church would not exist. So, so let's look at the scripture this morning. And uh, as a result, after uh, because of Wednesday Sunday, you can be thinking about it. But I'm after the message this morning. I'm going to ask any of you that are volunteers for the thrift store th for the for the church uh, that are uh, officers, maybe in one of these the nominations or the the board. Uh, servant leaders uh, in the church to come up, which may be a good, maybe kind of an eye opener, maybe most of us, or maybe a lot of us, or maybe a few left in the pews that, that don't feel like they, but also for anyone that would be willing or wants to answer the call to, to, uh, to leadership or to service in the church can also come up, and we're going to kind of devote ourselves to uh, serving God in that way, uh, whatever way that you serve. And uh, for all of us, we're, and since it may be a good a bit of us up here, we're going to uh, uh, pledge to help each other uh, as we serve together and to do these things. But it'd be kind of, I think, a, an eye-opening thing to realize how many people it does take to, to do uh, everything that's done at the church. So let's look this morning at the scripture. In verse 36, Jesus looks at the crowds, looks, and, and he says, uh, sees a great need. Great, but yet great potential. Uh, and tells his disciples to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send laborers. There's the help wanted at. You know, we need people. We need the Lord to send us laborers. He saw so much to do, but so few to do it. He said, pray to the Lord. Help, help is wanted and needed. Ask God to send laborers. So what about today? If Jesus were here today, would he still say the same thing? I think so, because he is here. Jesus is here, you know, in spirit. There are, so, there are still so many needs and so many receptive hearts out there, but so few to labor for them. You know, we get to thinking that things are so bad sometimes. I think some do anyway, but there's still 
the harvest is is ready there are people there that we could reach and that's what the scripture tells us today there are still so many that would be receptive hearts but so few to labor for them there there is just as much to do for the lord today as there was at the time of christ if not more the harvest is here people in our neighborhoods with needs physical and spiritual lonely people you know, people who do not know Christ even children that don't know Christ at a church where I uh, once served uh, we had an after-school program for a time and, and during one of the, the sessions the children were taken into the sanctuary to look at the different symbols used in worship some of the kids were, were in awe you could see it in their faces as they came in they had never been in a church before this was new territory for them and they were looking around taking it all in that was in small town usa folks it wasn't some foreign country and it's probably true here there are probably kids in our town who, who have never been in a church before so people you know the harvest is there lonely people people who do not know christ even children People who have need of worship are, are unable to attend anymore. You know, we meet that uh, need to some extent with our online live stream uh, for people that are able to do that. Uh, people with physical sickness or, or financial needs. You know, we are ministering to them with our benevolence fund and a thrift store, but there are probably still some needs out there that are not going met. Uh, people who do not have a good understanding of the Bible and God's love, the needs are out there. People who believe a lot like us, but don't know we exist. They've experienced church as a judging, legalistic people who, and have left the church, but they've never experienced it as a people of grace and love. Maybe they just need you to let them know what we are about and invite them. If we'll sow the seed, some will listen. Some will come up, as one of another parable that Jesus tells shows us. Some won't, but some will. That's what the ministry of the church is, is all about. Sowing seeds. You know, putting the word out there, inviting people. Are we, you know, for all of us, again, as Jerry mentioned a while ago, are we willing as Christians to follow God's plan? Will we really make a difference in our community? Will we be there to find these folks, these people that have these needs? Will we really see spiritual and numerical growth in our church? We continue to see that. Let's, let's look at some do's and don'ts concerning serving in our church. Some, first, let's look at some don'ts. Uh, don't do it to build ourselves up, you know? Sometimes, I guess, there could be a tendency to do that, you know, to want to be in front. To, you know, a lot of us don't want to be in front. We just assume to blend in. But some people want to do it to, to bring attention to themselves. Don't do it for that, to build ourselves up. Don't do it to please someone else, whether it's the pastor or anybody. Don't do it just to please someone else. Don't do it to ease your own conscience. And don't just do it just because nobody else will do it. You know, those, uh, those are really some done. Sometimes folks do some of these things because of some of this, and, and it helps us get the job done, but it's done best by those who, who are feeling called to that and wanting to do it for the right reason. Do do it to be willing to do it for the Lord because God has spoke to us, and we want to say, here I am. I'm, I'm ready to serve. You know, if you look on at the live stream and look uh, online I uh, want the song I had picked to go after this is here I am Lord you know uh, do it to be willing to be used of the Lord do it wholeheartedly not just half-heartedly and do it because you see the needs of the people and you are moved by a heart of love as Jesus looked across the crowds and he saw the needs he was moved with compassion he said pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers you know, we should be like that too. As we look and we see the needs, we are moved by a heart of compassion, moved by a heart of love to serve us. There are a lot of people out there who need to experience the love of God. 
They've not been shown that. People who have been judged because they are living together out of wedlock, perhaps. You know, Jerry talked about reaching out to all people. You know, this is some of the all people that may be out there that might not be receptive if we reached out. People who have been judged because they are living together out of wedlock. They just see the church as a judging place and they don't want to come because they don't want to be judged. People who have been judged because of their sexual orientation or people who have been judged because they smoke and they're tired of hearing preachers tell them that, they're not, that they need to stop smoking and uh, they get straightened out. People who have been judged because they drink or maybe people who have been judged because they have tattoos and some of the folks that don't think that, you know, I've judged them for that. People who have, summing it all up, have only experienced the judgment of the church and need to experience the love of God through the church. Do it because you realize it will make a difference. You know, and, and reach out and, and to all the folks that are out there that might be receptive to re and responding to the love of God that wants to take them where they are and, and, and let them begin to journey. The fields are white unto harvest. The harvest is plentiful, the scripture tells us. There are people who are ready to respond to the love of God. There are people who are ready to come to church if they knew we were here and maybe they would experience the love of God and, and not just the judgment. There are people who are ready. There are people who are ready to become active in a church. They want to find their place to serve in God's kingdom. There are people who want to make a positive difference in the world. You know, that is one of the, when you do you survey what people want to do and, and what they want to want out of a church or, or this type of a thing, a, a religious setting or whatever, they want to do something. They want to make a positive difference. They don't want to just come sit in the pews and listen to the preacher talk. They want to be involved. They want to do something. They want to do something like our thrift store that they see that makes a difference. They want to be in mission to make a difference for God. So there are people who want to make a positive difference in their world. They are hungry and thirsting to find a place where they can do that. I think that's where the Methodist Church can shine in our world today. We, are, we were born out of, uh, John Wesley started the small groups out of a desire to, to do something with our faith. And that's what the Methodist Church still is trying to do. Try to get people to do something with their faith, to serve because of our relationship with God. <coughs> people who want to make a positive difference in the world. They're hungry and thirsty to find a place where they can do that. Will they be able to do it here? Will they find their place here among us? Will we continue to be a place where people created in the image of God can find their place in the kingdom? Are we ready to do our part? Do we have a love for people? If we continue experiencing growth in our church, we will have to be concerned for the needs of people and willing to do something about it. We need people who are willing to commit to the ministries of the church. When we have families with children visit our church, will, will we be ready? When we have visitors, will we give them something to, for them to want to come back? Our circles of friendship extend to a lot of people and as they come, will we be ready to extend it to them? You know, and, and to include them so that they feel included. And we do that by, by how they feel when they come in. You know, I went to a church one time. I like to sometimes, when I'm on, when I'm, uh, on vacation, just visit churches. And I, and I prefer to do it, uh, not to walk in and say, I'm a pastor. But I like to just walk in there and just kind of fade into the back like anybody else in my in my shorts from camping or, or whatever, you know, and, and just see how it goes being a visitor there. And, and we went to one church one time, one of our United you know, Methodist churches. And, and of course, we, they had their greeters at the front door. They greeted us, gave us a bulletin, you know, welcomed us. We went in, sat down, had a hand of fellowship, and most of everybody just passed by us, but I'm not sure hand of fellowships are the best way to, 
to be uh, welcoming anyway. Uh, but most everybody went to the people they knew and, and shook their hands, greeted them, talked to them, sat around and talked, and we <laughs> kind of were just sitting there. After church, um, you know, they kind of walked by the, whoever was shaking hands at the back door, I think it might have been Pastor's wife, and um, uh, my wife, and maybe the kids, I can't remember, went to the bathroom, but I was out in the lobby by myself, uh, standing around out there looking at the pictures, their history and stuff, and there wasn't a single person came over and said anything to me. There was a stranger wandering around in their lobby. Uh, nobody spoke. Not even the pastor. Whenever they were in the hand of fellowship, the pastor got back to about uh, two uh, seats ahead of us and, and uh, visited with some people and, and then went back. Um, after we got home, after vacation, um, we, uh, I, I sent an email to that pastor. You know, we're connected. We can go online and we can find contact things for for each other. And, and I told him I visited his church Sunday. And he said, oh, I wish I'd known. I'd have introduced you and I'd, I'd have greeted you and I'd have all, all, all this, you know. And I didn't say to him, but I thought, should it have made any difference? You know, that he didn't know who I was. We will continue to need people who are willing to answer the call. People who have said yes to the call. God is working among us. Praise be to God. And thank you for being willing to be used of God. Those of you that, that already that ready are. There is a help one is sign for work in God's kingdom. Do we have what it takes? Let me read that passage to you again. Or part of that passage. 37, Matthew 39, 37, 38. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I'm going to ask those who have said yes to being volunteers, officers, or servant leaders in the church, or, or a thrift store ministry, and those, those who want to say yes to service today to come forth and maybe just kind of gather up here. And we're going to have a servant dedication where I'm going to, you know, read some questions and you're going to say, I will. And we're going to pray. I want to pray with you. So we want to ask God to, to bless our work. So if you would at this time, if you are involved in some way and you want to dedicate that to God, I invite you to come up this morning. Or if you want to be. If you are not able to come up, you can answer from your seat where you're at. Dear friend, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God to be volunteers, to be leaders, to be officers in the church and to serve the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and it calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to his people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ to make him known in your witness and your work. Today we recognize these folks and we, we uh, dedicate all these folks to, to God's ministry and the church. Do you, do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? We devote yourself to the service of God in the world. Will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? Yes, Lord. Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? Yes. Let's pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these, your servants, who have been given particular ministries in our church, in your church. 
Grant him grace to give himself wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and consecration, that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work, reward their faithfulness with the, the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, for all of us, rejoice that God provides labors for the vineyards. Will you do all, and you guys can answer for each other as well, not just the folks out there. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage these folks in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? We will. We will. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for what you do in the church and in the thrift store. And for any of the rest of you that serve that we're not able to come up for whatever reason. God bless you all. See, it takes all of us to, to, to serve, to make a difference in God's kingdom. Let's pray. God, we thank you for these folks that have come up and came up, and those who, who, who answered from their seats, that have answered the call and the service in, in, our, in your church. And we thank you for them and for all of us. Lord, maybe there are some here that did not respond and say yes to your call. So we pray you forgive us for that. And as we encounter you at the table, we pray that, that at that place, as we encounter you, that commitments can be made, that we can come to you and say, here I am, Lord, use me. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anoint him to preach good news to the poor. Proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when, when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, said, Take eat, this is my body, is given for you. As often as you take it, take it merits me. So if you take the bread, remember the life of Christ, that, that God lived among us, that body that God lived among us in, and how he, how he lived, how he loved, how he accepted people as they were, and, and, and let them begin the, the journey. Then he took the cup and blessed this, and drink this, this is my blood and the covenant for, uh, for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you drink it. Drink it, Mary, to me. So as you take the cup, remember that God did all that needs to be done for us through Jesus Christ for us to be forgiven and made right with God and given a chance to, to represent God in the world and love people for God. So remember that as you take the cup this morning. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offered for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let's pray. For out your Holy Spirit and us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be to the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Be present at our table, Lord, so that we can, can meet you here for whatever needs that are here today so we can go forth and better represent you in the world. For by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in mystery to all the world. Till Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 